everybody, I did it. I built a 24 by 32 three bay garage almost completely myself. And today I'm gonna to show you how I did it and why I ended up with a wood building instead of one of these affordable, versatile tube steel buildings that you see for sale online all the time. I'm gonna show you what happened so you don't make the same mistakes I did when planning your garage. So this is a completely stick built 24 by 32 three bay garage. I had plans all set up to have this pad poured and order one of those versatile, affordable tube steel buildings that you see for sale online all the time. And I ran into a bunch of issues and ended up stick building this myself. And today I wanna to talk to you about what happened so you don't make the same mistakes. So the first thing about these is they say that they're very affordable and that they're built to withstand everything. They say they're snow rated and I found out that those two claims aren't true. So the first thing is, my biggest issue is I live in the Northeast and there's a lot of snow. Sometimes we get two feet of snow in a single storm. So it was important that this building be strong. These, t these steel tube buildings say they're snow rated, but I did a little bit of research and what I ended up finding was a website about a couple of these that collapsed and actually showed pictures of them collapsing. And that's a major danger. I have a lot of money and equipment and cars in here and if this collapsed, it would be such a nightmare. So I needed to make sure this thing was strong. Not only did I find that article, but I also found this YouTube video where this guy talked about an uh, installer who installed his versatile st tube steel building. And it actually, they used the wrong trusses. So they installed trusses that weren't actually snow rated for his area. So that's another problem that these tube steel buildings have is actually providing you with the correct trusses and making sure that building is square and strong enough. You'll also note that these cheap, these cheap steel buildings, uh, the spacing on their trusses is, is enormous. Sometimes it's four feet of spacing. And that's a lot to ask for just that steel to support all of that snow load on steel trusses. So when I found uh, this out, I decided I probably needed to go stick built and go a different route. I then went to my local uh, wood supply. But for me, it's actually um, the people at Hammond Hammond Lumber. lumber Company. There's a bunch of them. There's Hancock Lumber in the Northeast. You just find your local lumber mill. You go to them and you talk to them about trusses. They can find you someone who will design your trusses for you free of charge. And the trusses alone, which I know how to build walls, but I couldn't figure out this roof. So the trusses alone were about $4,500. So I added the $4,500 to the two by sixes and plywood I would need to sheathe this. And I ended up with approximately $8,000. Now the frame kit alone for the same building from these cheap tube steel building companies was $8,000. So for the cost of the steel frame for one of these buildings alone, I was able to build an entire stick frame structure with engineered trusses, engineered for my situation by a company local to my state that knows the snow loads. And they delivered them here free of charge for half of the cost of just the frame. With the rest of the money for, I saved doing this, I was able to by the two by fours and zip system plywood to go on the top, roof rated zip, to zip system plywood and the zip system wall, which is waterproof. So this is gonna be good for, I just need it to go through the year because next year I'm gonna then sheathe this in the metal construction. So in the end, I will actually have a much stronger garage than the cheap tool, these cheap uh, steel buildings and an actually cheaper structure and it was delivered here, which leads me to another big issue about these cheap steel buildings online. I actually put one of these in my cart and started to check out, and then you have to sign a contract with them. And I'm gonna do my best to put the, this contract on the screen so you can pause it if you want to and actually read it through. But I'm not joking, this contract has things hidden in it like a 35% restocking fee. Now, when you're talking about a $10,000 building, a 35% restocking fee is astronomical and almost covers the cost of the trusses alone. So that was the first put off in actually ordering one of these online tube steel buildings. The second put off was that you're responsible for unloading. You have to unload this equipment 
or this these the structure all the pieces 32 foot trusses was what i was going to be dealing with that was on me it was also on me to make sure everything anything that happened during delivery was all on me not only that but if there was a tax issue with the building i would be on the hook for the lawyers and the fees they were charged if there was an issue that's right this company makes the customer responsible for any tax issues with the sale of their buildings that doesn't make any sense to me, and that to me was an immediate put off. I'm not gonna enter into a contract with someone who's making me responsible for their tax issues. So that was the turning point. Once I did that, the next day I was headed to the local lumber store. I sat down with them. They asked me the parameters of my building, the location of it. They sent it to the trust company. They designed my trusses. Here's a picture of my trusses. I used a, I think it's a rustic truss in Northern Maine. And they, they actually gave me a long lead time of almost eight weeks, which would have put me about at Thanksgiving to be putting up the structure. So I was worried about the cold. They actually delivered these trusses four weeks early. So I had enough time to get these trusses up, installed and roofed before the snow came. So I was really happy about that because I hear sometimes you have to wait for trusses. So I was really happy with their performance in delivering these trusses. So I definitely think I ended up with way better uh, building in the end it's it's so, built so much tougher uh once i put the steel on top of it it's going to be better insulated it's going to be stronger it's going to be uh heavier so it won't blow away as easy and it's actually going to be cheaper in the end so i think it's important that you guys find out these things and find out why you should build this this way and why you shouldn't use one of those steel buildings i'm not going to say there's no reason for these because if you're living in florida and you just need a cheap carport to throw up real quick and if the wind comes and it blows away it's probably better than it falling on your car certainly cheap cheap steel building is the way to go but let's go ahead and inside and take a look at this structure and how it was built okay so this is a real simple structure when you do two by sixes you're actually allowed by code to go two feet on center and i did that because uh, these trusses are designed to be two feet on center too so you want to make sure that these trusses line up with these posts so that obviously makes sense. Um, I did double doors so we can come in and out of it through the property. And then I did windows on this corner because I'm gonna put a little um, office and desk here. So um, I'm also planning on doing a some storage up above because I'm gonna have a lot of equipment and uh, a lot of materials in here that we're trying to make fit in here as well as cars. So it's a three bay garage so I should be able to fit um, three cars here as well as during the winter. I think I can spin one car and put it in front of that uh, I don't think the skid steer is gonna live in here because it's got a lot of work to do this winter Motorcycle obviously will um, We went ahead and built uh, the this wall in pieces because these are three individual heather, headers Which are pretty heavy and had to be put up uh, individually um, I'm got doors on the way in the next couple of weeks. They should be here uh, within a month actually it's quite a lead time i obviously still have a little bit of plywood to put in the top but since that's underneath the soffit really no snow and certainly no rain is going to come in there so but i gotta go buy another sheet of plywood or two to close that in um so after we did this wall and these walls and it was a big square we got the trusses and the next step was taking all these trusses and uh, building a wall to flop that one up against and then after that we just flop the next one up the big uh, issue with this was lifting these trusses, but it wasn't too hard if you flipped them upside down because they're a triangle and then you could put one point of the triangle up on top of there. And then uh, it was possible just by yourself to then lift the next one up on side of there on the side of that and then slide it all the way down into position and then flip it up into place. Uh, but after a couple of tries, I did then get the uh, skid steer going with these forks and some two by fours and turn it into kind of a crane so that I could lift it. So I was putting less strain on my body, put the rest of the trusses up that way, flipped them all individually, floop, 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 building it this way. When I got to about here, I had to put them all up at once because I needed that space for the flipping. So I put the last like three or four up at once and flipped them up and leaned them against the uh, last gable, which I put in at that point. And then I, once they were up, I carefully slid them the last three into place. Uh, the whole time you're doing that, you're putting in these spacer blocks in here, which all hold them up against the last gable, which you have supported at the time. Then once you get all these trusses in place, you start putting in all this support here, these cross braces. Uh, these cross braces are really important. These cross braces are actually what give the roof its structure. 
because um, otherwise when this thing gets snow loaded, these can start side wobbling and if they wobble at all, that just gives. So it's really important to have all your braces in. They put the braces in the drawing so you know where to put them. Um, it's a little bit hard to understand, but if you just keep looking at it, you can figure it out. So it's diagonal cross braces, longitudinal cross braces. They get all those braces in between, in the middle, at the top, at the bottoms. We get our hurricane times, which is really good because uh, this weekend we got hit with almost hurricane winds. I was without power for like a week, so I'm really happy I got those hurricane trusses in there. And uh, this building was fine. I had a bunch of people in my family had roof problems, but building was fine, hardly any leaks. So we got this completely closed in on the, uh, the roof and the gables. The roof completely taped off with um, zip system tape and I got the walls almost completely taped off. Um, I did throw this window up high over here on this one wall because the sun tracks like this and in the morning it's over here and in the afternoon it's over here and I'm almost always working in here in the afternoon so I wanted the light to come in and uh, light up this shop so that's why that We've got that tall window up there. So that's the garage. It was pretty simple and it's uh, much easier, or much cheaper than the steel buildings, which really surprised me. And I definitely think if you guys are debating what to do, um, you can do it. You can do it! You can build an actual wood stick construction building bigger than you probably think you can. When I started this, I didn't think I could build a building this big. Um, but I did it, and the uh, only reason I got this tarp on here is I wanted it for snow slickness. I don't think this plywood's too slick with snow, so with the snow on top here, it should just slide right off so I don't have to roof rake it or anything. I did have to buy this uh, couple of layers of scaffolding. I found it on Marketplace for like 200 bucks. I got like eight pieces of scaffolding, so good deal on that, and that was really helpful for getting up on the roof and lifting that plywood. I actually did put the plywood in the forks of the skid steer and lift them up to the edge of the roof and then pull them up onto the roof because it was pretty it was pretty awkward. But I got that done. Uh, just got to get a little bit more zip tape, close that in, close that corner in and around the windows and uh, get these doors in place and she's good for winter. And then in the spring, I will cover this in um, steel uh, to close it in as a steel building. And then uh, I'm also going to insulate it this winter too. So that's my steel building that I built myself. I hope you guys like it. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Check out some of my other cool building projects in this uh, video playlist over here. Check out some of my other cool videos and I'll catch you guys later. Round one, fight. <laughs>